We've all got rhythm in the way that you walk, in the way that you talk. Everybody's got rhythm in it, but some people don't know how to execute it. I was interested in music from about, uh, about three, four years of age, and eventually um, I needed something to practice on. My dad was just going up the wall. After a couple of years, I said to him, you know, can I have a kit? And he said to me, if you want a kit, you're going to have to go out and get a little part-time job. So I ended up going out and getting a little job with a milkman that, that enabled me to get the kit. 52nd Street was a band that was formed um, for a friend of mine who I went to school with called Derek Johnson. And we arranged to do a gig at the band on the wall and Tony Wilson and Rob Gretton came down. Uh, we did the gig and basically they, uh, they gave us a deal there after, straight after the gig. We ended up supporting New Order and Certain Ratio, Gloria Gaynor, playing all over the UK. And they said to us, if you can come over and do, basically do a tour of the States for six weeks and gave us £100,000 advance. Played at the Dance Interior and Studio 54, the famous club in New York, and basically all, all over the East Coast. Uh, we actually did a gig at the Hacienda and the Smiths supported us and it was the Smiths' first gig. £1.50 in, two fifty on the door. And they were rubbish. I'd say after about three or four years, the original members, myself and Derek, left. Eventually, I think after about six years, seven years, and that'd be a bit longer, the, it, it, the whole thing folded. So it was the end of one era and the start of another, really. Clint being an experience, what a great band. Yeah, I met Clint in a bar in Manchester. It wasn't long after the Inspirals had split up and he was having a beer and stuff. We just started talking about music and he decided that he, was, uh, he wanted to get a band together. So ended up going supporting Echo and the Bunny Man. And then we were doing really well. Things were doing really, really well. And things were going at an incredible rate. And then we went off to do King Tut's, which is the famous place where Oasis got signed by Alan McGee. So we were on our way to go to King Tut's, but we never made it. We ended up having a severe accident outside of Lockerbie. Quite a bad uh, crash. Well, the tyres blew up on the on the tour bus. People got airlifted and I ended up in Carluk Hospital having some surgery done to my eye and it, it, it was just a crazy time. And it's made me sort of reflect on the amount of times I spent with different people and how important you sort of your family is and you don't realise that when you're in a situation like this, if if the worst thing had have happened, I, I wouldn't have been here talking about this now. Just Jack, I was asked to if I was interested in doing some work with them. His lyrics are fantastic, you listen to some of his music, you know, the mean stuff in what he's saying. We did a few gigs, he was doing interviews, I spent a lot of time in London. So we'd finished basically recording the album, um, which he decided it was gonna be called Overtones. He come in with this little guitar lick for this, uh, this this song he had. He said, it's just this song I've got in my head. I said, I can't get it out. And it was called Stars In Their Eyes. We had a bit of a jam, put this track together, which is dead easy. Just bass, drums and guitar, just a basic three piece thing with him doing his lyrics over the top. I went on my merry way. And then about three weeks later, he ran me up and he says, uh, they're releasing Stars In Their Eyes, which is the first single. A couple of weeks later, he ran me back. My phone went and I was like, yeah, and he went, it's Jack. I says, how are you doing, mate? So right, the singles at number two. I says, no way. He says, yeah, Mika's Grace Kelly's at number one. I went, oh God, if you can pick that off number one, they'll have a number one hit. We did all right out of it. I ended up going to the bank one day. I had a pound for a pasty from Greg's. I was going to get a steak bake and I got my steak bake from Greg's, went into the bank. This was a year after my stars in their eyes had been out for nearly a year. And then um, I said to the assistant at the counter, I says, can you give me a bank balance? And she wrote this number on this slip and gave it me. And I said, is that what's in my account? She said, yeah. Can I draw it all out? She went, all of it. And I went, yep, all of it. I've got all this money in this plastic bag with a steak bake. And what's like Linford Christie, bombed it up, past the assay and the way the assay used to be, over the bridge into you, to my car. And eventually I got home and I said to my wife, I'm ready. I said, what are we have for tea? She went, I've done you some tuna, tuna and pasta bake. I says, all right. I said, should we have an Indian? And I just opened this rucksack and I took all the elastic bands off the money and, and I just literally went like that. And it was like a scene out of, uh, it was like a scene out of, uh, what's the film with uh, Scarface? I don't know what I mean. <laughs>